Okay, we won. Football teams ahead 14 to 3. That's a great afternoon so far. Weston. Uh, Jared Fialco. Roy, knowing your longstanding personal relationship with Lavelle, is there any part of you that would like to see this series continue almost to a year by year level? Oh, uh, haven't even thought of that. But Lavelle and I even talked before the season started, before all this stuff really got bad, uh, that uh, if we had been able to play an exhibition game, we were going to play them uh, and start something where I played the historically black schools uh, uh, in an exhibition game every year. And I was wanting to start with Lavelle because I just, he's such a good friend. He's a guy I trust. And, I have never done what I did during the game today. I called a timeout because I was so mad at those guys and because we started to shoot a free throw and two guys told me they had the same guy. And so that's the reason I called a timeout. So I went down and said, Lavelle, I was just trying to coach my freshman. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. We needed the timeout too. But I uh, don't know that I've ever done that, but that just shows how much I appreciate him, appreciate who he is and what he does. You've never had any issues with – I mean, big schools, small schools, traveling on the road at all. Have you ever once considered what it might mean to an HBCU to play at their? Uh, that's what, that's what play tech. So I feel like I've played about every place in the world. I probably have never thought in those terms, no, but uh, I'd have to think about it to see if, uh, I know when I was at Kansas, there were only four non-division one teams in the state, and we played uh, – one of them in an exhibition game and another one in a home game every year to give them the money and then switched and played the other two the next year. But uh, the, uh, the limitations on the size of the arenas in some place, but that's something I never thought of and may think of now. Thanks, Scott. Brad Thank Friedlander. Yeah, Roy, um, Caleb had six more turnovers today, and I believe that's now 24 for the season. How concerned are you about that? And is there a common theme to that, or is, is it just young player trying to figure his way out at this point? Well, guys, come on. You know me. I'm concerned about it immensely. You can't win big games if you turn the daggum basketball over. And point guards, I've always told them the two ways to stay on the court is guard the ball, stay in front of it, and don't turn the ball over. Uh, but also know that I've got two freshmen out there that are handling it, and it's, it is a difficult thing. Uh, and he's going to get better, and he has to get better. It's a simple thing like that. But uh, it's something that uh, you look down there, and they get 18 points off of our turnovers. That's way too many, and 18 turnovers in a low-possession game because uh, they milked the clock a lot in the first half and uh, took some time before they started their offense. So. I'm not sure because I don't have the stats, but I would guess it might be our lowest possession, number of possession game that we've had this year and have 18 turnovers is not very good. Brendan Marks. Hey coach, I just wanted to ask about Andrew Playtech. Um, obviously he had that 8-0 run himself in the middle of the second half, but, but just how important has he become for your team and especially the value he provides as a floor spacer? Well, it's, it's something else. I mean, Caleb shoots the ball well. Puff can really shoot it. Kerwin can really shoot it. RJ shoots it well. Caleb, uh, but they haven't done it in games. And so those two threes by Andrew today were really big for us. There's no question about that. I was going to play him earlier in the first half. I was going to play him longer, but one time he jumped up to try to block a shot instead of taking charge. And he's blocked the same number of shots at North Carolina that I have. And so you got to be smart. You got to take a daggum charge instead of thinking you're a Kim Elijah one or something. But his, uh, his the threes that he made and what he did defensively guarding that guy that uh, was a tough uh, matchup, I think both ends of the floor and Andrew did good things for us. Ryan Wilcox. I'm sorry, Kim. So it's, the curse just told me it's five fewer possessions this game than we've had in any other games. And uh, not only did we have 18 turnovers, we got a crick in my neck because of it. So. Ryan Wilcox. <laughs> yeah, Coach, can you talk about the lift that Armando gave you guys today? He had uh, 15 in the first half. Well, I think at the first half, he was the only offense. Uh, you know, you look down there, six for seven from the floor, seven for 10 from the line, 11 rebounds, uh, and only one turnover. So he didn't get caught by the turnover bug. But, uh, no, I think Armando was really good for us. Kip Coons. Last 
one, Matt. Yeah, Roy. Last, uh, one, last one, Kip. Uh, Roy, I realize the inherent danger in asking you to comment about Duke basketball, but um, Krzyzewski had a point this week about the season feeling very strange. What was, what was your understanding of what he meant? And do you agree or disagree? You know, guys, I'm not on social media. I, I'm not. I, if you call me, I know that you call me and call you back. You text me, I know, and I can text you back. That's it. I don't read, tweet, or twit, whatever the crap it is. Uh, uh, but I have seen some of that. But I have not seen all of Michael's comments. The comments that I saw, uh, it made sense. I mean, it's well, you used it yourself, Kip. It's a strange time. I mean, it's the most unusual time that I've ever seen. And it changes. And the thing that I saw, and again, I don't, I haven't seen it. Uh, somebody told me, said it was strange times. I agree. It's times that we're not used to. I agree. And that we should probably take a different look at it now than we did in July uh, or June. I don't even know if he used the time, but he said some months ago. So I, I think there is validity to that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, again, if he, if he said Roy Williams is ugly, I might have something to say about that. I'd probably agree. Uh, but uh, I, so I don't know what he said. Those three things are what I heard, and, and I agree with that. And I guarantee that Mike doesn't go to bed at night, and the last thing he does before he goes to bed to read what Roy Williams' comments were. And so uh, I have a tremendous amount of faith in Michael. It's, it's a surprise the heck out of people. Uh, that we've been on committees together for so many years. And I would bet 95% of the times we agree when we were on those committees making decisions or suggestions or whatever they were. Uh, we agree on a tremendous high per, a tremendously high percentage of things. And I think that uh, uh, somebody said some other coach said something, and I don't know what that was. Uh, but I do know that I think Michael has a, a great concern and interest in what college basketball is where college basketball is going. And the other thing is Michael Krzyzewski has a, has a right to his own opinion. He doesn't need to get that from Roy Williams. Let me check my phone and see if he called me and ask if he could say what the hell he wanted to say. I don't see any calls from him. But, uh, again, guys, I don't stay on that stuff. And, and again, uh, Mike doesn't watch what I say every day either. But those three things that somebody told me said, I have no problems with that, with that whatsoever.